Okay, thank you for coming to this prayer session. Uh, but before we pray, I will just take uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, 10 to 15 minutes to present something quickly. This just to refresh our memory and put us into the this thing again, to the mood of prayer, something that can motivate us and then can remind us what we are pursuing when we are praying. Amen. So this is what the Lord gave me today. He said Christianity is a process of growing into the God into God's nature. Amen. Christianity is a process of growing into God's, God's nature. So the Bible and Christianity are not theories, but reality that requires seriousness and faithfulness to experience faith, seriousness and faithfulness to experience uh, to experiences or into experiences. Amen. Then you can experience. Amen. Like you can say right now, you are, you let's say that you depart from the earth, whether you go to hell or you go to heaven or whatever Hades or whatever you go to. So when they ask you, have you been on on earth, you say yes, you experience it. But baby, who are not, people who are not born yet, but who are created already in the realm of the spirit and the heaven, they, they don't, they have not experienced anything on earth. They're an angel who never comes here. Amen. But now Christianity as well is a realm. Okay, is a is a life where you live in the physical, but you go into the unseen world. Okay, you are in the physical, but you are in the unseen world as well, and you are experiencing things. Amen. This we call Christianity. But now, and when you have that, you so you are both in the physical and the spiritual, and you can act in both, and then you can live in dominion. At that time, we call you Christian. Amen. So let's go. So I just want to read some few scripture quickly. We can understand something. Uh, when I say Christian, the Bible and Christianity are not theories, is a reality. Because today, the way a lot of people take the Bible, uh, especially when we are in doctrines, is just theory, theory. Everybody agree with this one. I'm right. This one, this one. We don't need to be right. There's only one truth, not two, one truth. And when you have that one truth, and then you experience what everybody in the bible experiences or people in heaven experience amen so let's go colossians 1 verse 20 to 23 verse 20 to 23 he said and through him talking about christ god reconciled everything to himself may he made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of christ's blood on the cross this includes you who were once Far away from God, you were his enemy, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. By your evil thoughts and actions. So, it's clear that when you are growing in the God's nature or you are growing in Christianity, you, our actions should be changing and our thoughts as well should be changing. So, the more your thoughts and actions have changed, the more you become like Christian. You become what who God wants you to be, and you can progress into his nature. Amen. So, yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence. Alia, into his own presence. This is why I want to tell you that everybody, everybody can go to the Amen. Amen. Everybody can go to church and thinking that he is in the presence of God, but it's not true. When you enter the presence of God, you know that you are in the presence of God. Last Monday, we talked about the three different dimensions of the presence of God. Okay. Okay. So, he said what? He has brought you into his, his own presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. Without a single fault. Single fault in your thoughts, single fault in your, what do you call it? In your actions. Amen? But you must continue to believe this truth and start firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you receive when you heard the good news. The good news has been preached all over the world 
and I, Paul, have been appointed as God's servant to proclaim it. But now, one thing I want to bring out that I want everybody to understand that this is not given to anybody. If this was written to the Colossians. But now, just listen to how Paul introduced the Colossian church. Mm -hmm. Amen? How Paul introduced the Colossian church. He said what? This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle to Christ Jesus and from our brother Timothy. We are written this, this we are written to God's holy people in the city of Colossus who are faithful brothers and sisters, who are what? Faithful brothers and sisters. So when we are picking Bible verses to quote this, to quote that, to quote this, to quote that, to say this, to say that, and we are praying nothing is happening, that means we are not in the truth. We need to have the courage to say the things for people to change and people to come into the truth. Amen. When you call this, you call this. You pray, but you call this, you call this. You fast, you pray this. You are not in the truth. Your thoughts and your actions are not in line. They, they may follow one doctrine, but they are not in line with the truth. Amen. So what are we? So we are, we are written, we are, we are writing to God's holy people in the city of Colossus who are faithful brothers and what you sisters in the in Christ. May God, our Father, give you grace and peace. So this is how he introduced the, 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 the chapter 1. This, what I read one is chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. But the one I read before was chapter 1, verse 20 to 23. Okay, 20 to 23. But now, yesterday we did something. Amen? Yesterday we did something in church. What we did is that we do a, 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 a prophetic workshop. Okay? Or what can call spiritual worship. But when you say, say spiritual, when it's not of God, you can't call it prophetic. So what we did is, I said, okay, everybody should pray. Everybody, we allow everybody to pray for 15 minutes. After the 15 minutes, uh, but before that, I uh, presented again, I uh, reminded everyone what, uh, level one to level seven of what? Of the presence of God. Oh, no, no, the presence of or the levels of ascensions, I mean, uh, of ascending the presence of God, or yeah, uh, the level of ascending the presence of God, or ascending, uh, assessing God, I mean, the realm, the different realm that we can assess when till we get to the last one, the seven one, the uh, seven. Okay, so what I did, I picked up two people. Okay, the people, I, I, I asked everybody, where have you reached when you are praying? One person say. She has reached the, re the realms of love. Another one, uh, I just speak her because I know she was in the realm of charging, okay? Because uh, uh, after charging, you reach love. So I pick her up. When I pick her up, okay, yeah, let's be good. Uh, the idea, I can ask them to give the testimony, but let me just uh, summarize this so we can go quick. So when I pick her up, I say, okay, the first one that I, uh, I pick up, which you reach the realm of love, I told her, Okay, now take a subject and pray in the realm you are. As soon as she started, she enter. First of all, myself, I enter the presence of the, the presence of love, the tangible presence of love, love immediately. And everybody saw the power that fell on me immediately. Okay, but now I told her without praying, calling God or anything, you know, just to access the presence of God, because the Bible is telling us that what he has brought you into his own presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without fault and single. But now, what that one thing I did not say yesterday, so when you, in, you, you can enter the presence of God and the power will be knocking you down, but now when you enter the presence of God, the less force is in you, okay, the less you have fault is in you, more you can stand in the presence. Okay, more you can stand in the presence. But now, okay, the objective is to tell people how to receive, to enter the presence and receive. But now, what you are not talking? About. So now, the first person enter the presence. So everybody saw the way she when I say, okay, start pray. She prayed in front of everyone. She entered the presence. Everybody saw the tangible presence of God and the manifestation. Without me praying or saying anything. Okay, so 
But now, why am I saying this? I'm telling, I told everybody that my objective is to, for the next two, two months that's in front of us, everybody who will be praying one hour minimum, I say minimum of one hour a day, every day, seven days, one hour on your own, meditating on the word of God and changing your mind, changing your, your thoughts and changing what you call it, your action, amen? And you are disciplined like that. And by now you add on some fasting, minimum of three days, amen, of fasting as well. So we, the least among us must be in what the, the realm of sensitivity, what is the realm of charging, okay, where you will be sensible to the Lord of the word of God, sensible to God, and you can be receiving for God everything. But now we say that in the next four months, we want the least among us to be in the realm of love. And the next six months, we want everybody to be the least, okay? The least or everybody to be in the realms of power. Amen? So now the first one did that. The second one, uh, as she was in the realm of charging, I brought her out. I said, okay, pick up a subject that somebody that you know very well, the person is going through bad situation. She picked out the person. I said, now start praying for that person. She started praying for that person. As she started praying for that person, she moved into the realm of love. She was praying, praying, praying. And later she said she feel relief. So as she was praying with the person, she became one with the person, with the problem, everything, the soul of the person. So as she feel relief, I told her the, the person now is free. And so just to teach people how to change situation around us because we are soldiers of God. So we need to enter his presence. We need to change, grow into his nature. Then he will empower us to be changed situation amen so this is what happens yesterday but to tell you that if we are not in the truth those things will not be happening it's not me commanding anybody i didn't command on anybody all the people were there they would they, they, they could have seen it amen okay but now uh to before i conclude i want to read two things so we can understand something and uh, this one is in the vision the final question page 55 uh, 56 a uh, paragraph from paragraph two he said, I started thanking, listen, eh? he was with the Lord, okay? Um, he said, I started thanking and praising the Lord. And immediately, I was in his presence again. Listen, and the presence again, because what I want to tell you that the presence of God is three dimensional. The video is there, you can go and watch it. I'm not going to present it again. Amen? But I was in his presence again. It was uh, hard to contain the emotions and glory that I left when I, I did this. The experience became so intense, that's the tangible presence, intense, that I stopped. Amen? That I stopped. So why did he stop? Because he was trying, he was going from the tangible presence into the terrible presence. Amen? So wisdom was standing by beside me, putting his hand on my shoulder. He said, you you enter his gate with thanksgiving, his court with praise. But that was so real. I exclaimed, I, I left, I left as if I were there again. No, I felt like I, I felt as if I were there again. Amen. You were there. You were there indeed. Okay. You were there indeed. So that's why I was teaching. So you can the way you can switch them. So you can do. Five minutes or five seconds or ten seconds, you can switch right. Okay. So I went there again, replying wisdom. It has not gotten more real, but you have. Okay. It has not got more real. That the presence has not got more, but you, you have. Just as the Lord told the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in his in paradise. You can enter his paradise as any time. As at any time, you can enter his paradise at any time. The Lord, his paradise, and this, this mountain are all abide in you. Because he is in you, what were but four days before are now a reality to you because you have climbed the mountain. I mean, you can have climbed the mountain. The reason you can see me and all that can is not because I have entered your realm. But because you have entered mine. Okay, so Christianity is a process to enter the realm of God by changing our nature into his nature so we can enter his realm. 
Then when you enter his realm, as you are growing into his realm, you are growing into his ability and his powers, then anything that is here, you can change it. Like the way I got the sister yesterday to change things about, uh, uh, even up to now, I don't know who she prayed for. But the things have been changed in the realm already. So I told her from Tuesday, call the person, the person will tell that the situation has changed. Which is yesterday, Sunday to Tuesday, I'm, I'm giving three days or Tuesday or Wednesday. You can, yeah, just to call the person, you see that situation has changed. Amen. So let's go. Okay, this is the real listen, eh? this is the reality the prophet knew. People like Elijah, Elisha, okay, they knew which gave them great boldness. Even when they stood alone against army, they saw the rev heavenly host that was for them. Just not just the earthly one arrived against them. Okay, so when I am teaching this, it's because the Lord calls me Joshua. Okay, he calls me. Okay, I told you the experience before, telling me to take people into the pro, uh, what you call it, the promised land. So the lawless time that is coming, war, everything that is coming. Okay, so if you listen to me, and uh, you, I won't say to me to the voice of God in you feel me. You listen to the voice of God is me, the teaching, and you submit and you discipline yourself. None of those things will do anything to you. Why? Because you will change your nature. To enter his realm. Amen. But when you keep on, uh, keep you keep your mind in the system of this world. You see, uh, even tonight, uh, uh, before I was meditating, you showing you that whatever comes to your mind is what your soul is seeing. Let's say right now I'm seeing something in the past. I'm having some imagination coming, 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 coming. So that means my soul and my heart is focused on that. But now, if I take my focus off and I put it on the things of the Lord, meditating on the things of the Lord, meditating on the things of the Lord, so I'll be meditating, seeing all the things of the Lord. That's why I say meditate on the things of the Lord day and night. When you meditate on the things of the Lord day and night, that means your soul and your heart and your spirit are living in the realm of God in the things of God. Then you can be growing design. When you are designed, the way we walk with our leg to go to a situation, to a a a position or whatever situation, whatever. So in our heart as well, our desire is the desire we use to grow, you know, to move to our situation. So when you are moving to what, uh, what do you call it, the things of the Lord. So this how spiritually you are moving, you are moving, you are moving. Amen. So let me read this to conclude so we can understand what I want to say today. So I know what, and to, uh, I mean, Romans 10 verse 2, uh, actually, I need two to four. Why? Okay, I'll get four from somewhere. Okay, let me get it from the Bible immediately. Yeah, uh, I need two to four. Say, I know what enthusiasm they have for God. Amen. Verse 10, uh, Romans 10. I know what enthusiasm they have for God, but it is misdirected zeal. It is a misdirected zeal. Amen. For they don't understand God's way of making people right with himself. Refusing to accept God's way, they cling to their own way of getting right with God by trying to keep the law. This is what we're talking about, our doctrine now. So in that time, it's the law. But in our time, people have many, many doctrines. And that, see, they believe in it. They are hoping, they are hoping, but nothing is changing. Amen. For Christ has already, <coughs> excuse me, for Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all who believe in him are made right with God. Amen. So that is NLT. Let me read it in New King James and we'll finish there. It says, well, For I bear them witness that they have zeal for God. They have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. Not according to the knowledge that is of God. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, which is our doctrine, amen, our different doctrine that are not working, amen, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So anyone who believes, 
when you come to Christ, which is the word of God, the true word of God, you grow into these seven dimensions of Accession, access, ascension of realm of domain of God, then your body, everything will be changing. So, uh, okay, so I'll stop here so we understand it. That's why I say it is important that you should be coming to church. Where some people want to stay on Zoom, on YouTube, they don't want to come. They are missing out. When the time will come, I'm telling you, maybe our phone is not going to work or whatever. Amen. So anything, just come there and be, become the student of God. Amen. Not to me, one of my students, student of God. Just listen to the voice of God through me. And I'm, what I'm asking is for meeting a week, Monday, Wednesday, uh, what do you call it? Friday and Sunday. All these four, we, we look at different subjects. The way you can go to school, you have mathematics, English, geography, and history, amen. And so we have different subjects that we cover. And then when you are ascending, everything will work in harmony, and you can grow into the this thing of God, amen. So I will just um, I stop, uh, amen. Stop it here, amen. So we can pray, amen. So we can pray. Thank you.